Hello, good evening, Maris. Hello, teacher. How are you? Fine. You're How fine. about you? Oh, my day was great. So tomorrow is already the weekend, so it is good. It is good. Yeah. Yes. So I think that, um, do you have any plan for the weekend? Uh, no plans? You, no. No. Uh, rest. Rest. Okay. All right. Good evening, Carlos Omar. Good evening, Abigail. Um, good evening, Nelly. Okay, guys. Uh, so we are going to start with today's class. Welcome. Okay, welcome once again. So today we are going to start with the following agenda. Yes. Well, today we are going to start with the warm up. We also have grammar, and today we are going to cover unit four, and we are going to talk about safety plans, and we are going to start with passive voice, um, in present perfect. Okay. We also have a listening quiz, and we have a reading quiz, and of course, a speaking time. Yeah. So we are going to start with the warm up, guys. And as a warm up today, we have the following. Okay, so challenge yourself to say it quickly and accurately without stumbling over the words. So this one is a tongue twister. It's for us to practice the sh sound. Okay, so it goes like this. It goes like this. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Yeah, this one is for us to practice the SH sound. Yeah, and the S sound as well. Once again, she sells seashells by the seashore the shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Yeah. Okay, so practice it. Practice it, you alone. Uh, okay, Nelly. So practice it, you alone. Okay, I'll give you uh, 30 seconds. Practice it. And then I want some volunteers, okay? Me teach it. Okay, go. She sells, she sells by the she she so sure mm -hmm. the shells she sells are surely she sells. So if she sells shells on the she's she's whore, mm -hmm. I'm sure she sells she's whore shells. Okay, so so Carlos, mm -hmm. okay. In this case, <laughs> seashore. 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 Uh -huh. So she sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Yes? Okay. Um who wants to try? Me? Okay. Uh first Abigail and then Maurice. Okay. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are Surely she sells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Okay, very good. Yes, Abigail, it was good. Use fluency. Okay, we need to practice it so you can uh, say it fluent. Okay, good evening, very teacher. good. Good evening, Atilio. I am driving. Okay, got I'm it. Out. Sorry. Don't worry. It's okay. Thank you. All right, Maurice. Okay. She sell she sell by the seashore. The shell she sell are surely the shell. So mm -hmm. if she sell shell on this seashore, I'm sure she sell 
t-shirt shell. Okay, very good. Yes, Maurice. Okay, um, let's see, uh, Tony. It's so difficult, teacher, but I'm going to try. Yes. She sells these shells by this t-shirt. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Shells. Very good. Yes. Well done. Okay, so let me see. Um, another volunteer. Let me see. Um, Pablo, are you there? No. Pablo is not there. Okay. Let me see. Uh, well, Carla is as a listener. Okay, guys, let's continue, all right? So my recommendation is for you to practice it in your house, right? Whenever you have the time. Okay, so let's continue. And today, guys, we are going to start with the following question, okay? So are manufacturing plants dangerous places to work? Yes or no, okay? And why? All right, so um, Tony, help us read in the information. Okay. Thank you. Are manufacturing plants dangerous places to work? Yes. Manufacturing plants can present various hazards and risks due to the nature of their operations. Mm -hmm. It's important to note that many manufacturing plants implement robust safety programs and protocols to minimize risk and ensure the well-being of their employees by adhering to strict safety standards, providing equate training, implementing safety procedures, mm -hmm. procedures yes. and conducting regular inspections. Manufacturers can create safe work environments. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So, yes. Uh, good evening, Vladimir. In this case, guys, um, as you can see right here, manufacturing plants can present various hazards, right, and risks. So this is related to the topic that we were covering yesterday. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it says that it's really important to note that many manufacturing plants implement robust safety programs and protocols yeah and what is the meaning of safety plans safety protocols right uh, carlos um can you please help us reading this i think that safety. carlos yes okay. safety plans safety plans also know of safety programs or safety management mm -hmm. systems are essential for promote, promoting and making, making a safe or healthy world environment. Okay, a pronunciation in this case, safety, safety. Yes, so safety plans guys are also known as safety programs or safety management systems. And those are essential for promoting and maintaining yeah a safe and healthy work environment yes the safety plans all right in this case what type of rules do we need to follow whenever we think about safety plans yeah what do they contain yes so um let's see um vladimir are you there Yes, sure. Oh, help us reading this list. Assess click the bullet. All of them. Okay. So the type of rule do you think is a safety plan management? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Tenants, um, identify hazards, hazards, establish uh, safety policies, uh, set safety objectives, train, uh, train and education employees, promote communication and reporting, uh, implement control measures, conduct regular inspection and audit, audit, emergency, emergency preparedness, document and reviews, continuous improvements. Okay, thank you, Vladimir. Guys, what are the rules that a safety plan should have? Okay, well, we have some examples right here. Okay, um, so we have assess and identify hazards, establish safety policies, which is very important, set safety objectives, which is crucial, right? This is the goal. Train and educate employees, of course, right? So promote communication and reporting whenever something is failing. Implement control measures, quality, right? Conduct regular inspections and audits, audits, yeah? Emergency preparedness. Yeah, document and review and continuous improvement. Yeah, those are some of the rules that a safety plan should have, okay? Now, let's move and let's go to the book. Yeah, we unit four and we are still with assessing risk. Yeah, so uh, I need two volunteers. One is going to be Joel and the other one is going to be Diego. Me, teacher. Thank you, Carlos. You are Joel and Diego. Me. Thank you, Abigail. Okay. G. How has a safety Google's been installed? <laughs> I don't see them anywhere. Your Google's. Okay. Goggles. Google Google uh -huh. have been taken away. There are new safety measures in the plant. Okay. You got to you got to be guided. What are those measures about? You are re required to wear air protection gloves, reflective vest. Mm -hmm. Protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, mm -hmm. air ear, mm -hmm. air blocks, mm -hmm. store tools in proper location. Mm -hmm. So my Google's and the other tools I left around here. How being taken away? Yes, the new safely plan has been designed to provide a scared tour outside the tour room. Okay, thank you. All right, so guys, first of all, pronunciation. Okay, so this is going to be, remember, safety, safe, safety, yeah? So safety, and this one is goggles, Go, goggles, yeah? Then we also have this one, which is measures, measures. We also have this one, which is kidding, kidding. And this one, which is ear ear right ear so it says uh g have my safety goggles been stolen i don't see them anywhere your goggles have been taken away there are new safety measures in the plant you've got to be kidding what are those measures about you are required to wear ear protection 
gloves, reflective vest, protection belt, helmet, jacket, rubber boots, earplugs, store tools in proper location. Store tools like um, place them in the correct location. So my goggles and the other tools I left around here have been taken away? Yes. The new safety plan has been designed to prohibit scattered tools outside the tool room. Thank you, uh, George, got it. Guys, first of all, we are going to uh, study vocabulary, okay? I'm pretty sure that you can see many new words probably, okay, about some, I would say, um, objects, okay, that we mentioned here. And let's go right here before us answering the, the, the questions, okay? So what is ear protection? Look at this picture. Yes, so we have this picture and this man is actually wearing ear protection. Yes, how do we call this? How do we call them? Uh -huh. What are those? Those are earmuffs, like this, earmuffs. Yes, and this is called ear protection. Then we also have reflective vest. This is very common. So in English, this is called reflective vest. Yes, we also have gloves that I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with this word. Then we also have, look at this, this is called protection belt. Yeah, then we also have helmet, which is very common as well, right? Helmet. We also have rubber boots, yeah? They're rubber boots, those, very common as well. Yeah, in the, in, in the plants, right? Manufacturing plants. Then we also have those which are called earplugs. Those are in like similar to the ear protection, those similar to the earmuffs. And the only difference is that they are smaller, right? Than the other ones. And those are called goggles. Yes. Those are goggles. Yes. But this is for swimming, teacher. Yes, this is for swimming, but we have different type of goggles, actually. Mm. Yeah, correct. Yes. So in this case, let's go back. And now that is the vocabulary that we have right here, right? So let me ask you, what items is Joel looking for? Safety goggles. Safety goggles. Safety. safety huh? Very good. And what is the new safety measure about? Mm -hmm. What is the new safety measure about? The Google prohibit scatter tools outside have been. Um, mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding. What are those measures about? Your protection, gloves, reflective vest, protection belt, helmet. Correct. Yes, all the implements. Yes, exactly. You need to wear all of these type of uh, implements, right? You need to wear them. Or you need to store those tools in proper location. Yeah. And in this case, guys, it says, okay, uh, the new safety plan has been designed to prohibit uh, scattered tools outside the tool room. What is the meaning of a scattered tool? That means herramientas dispersas, yeah? Que las deje tiradas, right? So herramientas dispersas. So now, number three, in your opinion, 
in your opinion, this is personal opinion, in your opinion, why should tools not be scattered in the production plant? So remember, dispersas, okay? Dispersas, scattered, dispersas. Why should not be like that, guys? Because a uh, cool case and occupational accident. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, very good. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Somebody else that has another opinion? Um, in this is scattered tools. Maybe it's a risk for the other employees. Correct. The okay. it, yes, it is related to risks, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. So now, guys, let's move and let's uh, work on um, the following, okay? Which is present perfect, passive voice, positive sentences. As you can see, guys, right here, we have different, um, we have, let me see. Yes, we have different sentences and questions which are highlighted, right? They are in bold. So those are present perfect passive voice. Yes, so that is a topic that we are going to cover today. So basically, guys, this is very simple, okay? The first thing is that you know that the present perfect is the one that uh, we studied uh, some weeks ago, right? So when it comes to passive voice, the positive sentences, we have active voice and we also have passive voice. Yeah, you remember about that. Now with the passive voice, we use auxiliary verbs and the auxiliary verbs for the present perfect in the passive voice are the following. Has been, have been in a positive and we also have hasn't been and haven't been in negative. Yeah, and we have, Two examples. We have active voice and we have he has completed the work. Present perfect, active voice. He has completed the work. Passive voice, the work has been completed by him. Yes, the work has been completed by him. Active voice, she has written five poems. Passive voice, five poems have been written by her. So you see, now we just actually use different type of auxiliary verbs. Yes, look at this has been or have been with positive sentences. Mm -hmm. So he has completed the work, right? Or in this case, we can also use this one. She has written five poems. Ella ha escrito cinco poemas, right? But what about passive voice? Cinco poemas han sido escritos por ella. Yeah. Han sido. ¿Hm? Sí, es... yo, yo traduje, perdón, cinco poemas fueron escritos por ella, pero ¿estoy bien? Sí, yes. Sí, fueron o oh, han sido, ok. Han sido, yes, both are correct. Very good. Fueron o oh, han sido. Yes, correct. Um, so now, what you need to remember is just the, the auxiliary verbs, right? That's the most important part. And this is positive sentences. So now let's move to negative sentences. Well, what we do is that we just use the auxiliary verb in negative. Hasn't been and haven't been. Negative, right? And we have active voice, he hasn't completed the work, 
passive voice. The work hasn't been completed by him. Negative. She hasn't written five poems. Five poems haven't, plural, been written by her. Negative. Yes, present perfect. Present perfect. Okay, passive voice. Any questions so far? Any doubts? Something that maybe is not clear? Everything is okay? All right, let's continue. So then we also have uh, questions. We all know how to formulate questions, right? So in the active voice, present perfect, have you completed the project? Passive voice, has the project been completed by you? Mm -hmm. Then we also have a second example. Has she written five poems? Passive voice. Have five poems been written by her? Yeah. So in this case, what we do with the passive voice structure, as you can see right here, we use has, then the object, then been, verb in past participle, and the complement, by whom, right? By you in this case. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the structure. Yes. So we have positive. Look at the examples. Yes. Negative. Look at the examples. Yes, and we also have questions. Look at the examples. And we have passive voice in the present perfect, which is very common, yeah? So now let's move to the book, all right? Uh, I need two volunteers. One is going to read this first uh, information and then the second one. I need two volunteers. Uh, Tony, please, number one, okay, all of this. And number two? Me, teacher. Thank you. Okay. The passive boy is used when the, when the emphasis of the sentence is on the action and not on the subject. Number one, letter A. John goggles have been taken away. Yes. In contrast to... One B, they have been, they have taken your goggles away. In sentence 1A, the person who took away the goggles is not important. The fact that they were taken away is instead emphasized. 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 Excellent. Emphasized. Thank you. Carlos? Today, I myself the Google's been stolen in, const in construct to, to be how they stolen my safety Google's. This question focuses in the safety Google's, not in the person who stolen them. Very good. Guys, um, well, basically this is going to be the same information, right? The one that we had before, but um, the passive voice, as you may know, is used when the emphasis of the sentence is on the action, right? What we explained uh, yesterday and not on the subject. So in other words, the, the doer in this case is not uh, that, I would say, relevant. Okay, so, and we have the example um, that we had on the role play. Your goggles have been taken away. 
In contrast to, they have taken your goggles away. This is passive voice and this is active voice. And as you can see, they don't add um, the by, by whom. I mean, sometimes it's not important, but I do recommend you to always use by whom, okay? Then uh, we also have the questions, right? Have my safety goggles been stolen in contrast to? Have they stolen my safety, my safety goggles? Uh -huh. So the, this question focuses on the safety goggles, not in the person who has stole them. Yeah, not on the doer, remember, right? They focus on the objects, yes? So basically, guys, this is the present perfect passive voice, yes? Um, we also have some um, exercises right here, okay? That we need to um, try to create the sentences with this, um, different verbs using passive voice. Let's complete the following sentences and questions in the passive voice. And we need to choose the appropriate verbs, all right? So number one, well, first of all, do you know what is the meaning of issue? Um, like a problem? Very good. I mean, you know, issue could be a noun and can also be in, uh, can also be a verb. So as a noun is a problem, honey. But as a verb, no. Okay, so as a verb, it is a synonym of give, de dar, de emitir. So in this case, number one, three new safety measures. Medidas de seguridad, guys. Three new safety measures. Have been issued to the workers. Oh, okay, very good. Uh -huh. Have been, which is the past participle of issue? Issue. Issued. Issued. Very good. Have been issued um, by, uh -huh, by the workers, as you said. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. Excellent. You see? And see that I say huh? I him have been used, used for the worker, it's correct too. Or for is not necessary. To is, use. Yeah, it's not necessary. No. Or to in, the workers. Mm -hmm. Um in this case, it depends. It depends on the idea that you would like to transmit, right? To the workers, that means that it is to them and by it means that it is uh, for instead of using for we use by el tú usted lo está emitiendo para ellos para los trabajadores y en con el by han sido emitido por los trabajadores uh -huh. y en el tú para ellos para los trabajadores so it depends on the idea at the end. With the prepositions, it depends on the idea. But now, can I use for instead of by? I wouldn't recommend use for, you need to use by because it's passive voice. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, number two, we space new earplugs.
What do you think? Innovate, make, train, create, give. New earplugs. Maybe we have we have been given. We have been give. Aha, uh -huh, which is the past participle of give? Uh, gave. Uh, that is simple past. Oh, okay. Given. It is going to be given. Given. Yes. Even new we have plugs. been given new earplugs by our boss. We have been given. Um, a nosotros se nos han dado. Nos han sido dado. New earplugs. You know, guys, this is the, the, I'm pretty sure that most of you have heard this expression. I have been told. Me han dicho. That is passive voice. I have been told. Okay. Or some of you use, I was told. That is passive voice. Yeah, I was told is passive voice as well. So number three, number three, the new safety goggles are nice. They... And that person is like the Samsung um, <laughs> oh, sorry, Tony. No, don't worry. Uh -huh. Number three, the new safety goggles are nice. What do you think? Uh -huh. What can we add as the idea? If we are saying that the new safety goggles are nice, so. They, uh -huh. they have been, what do you think? Innovation. Okay, now innovation. Yes, the, the verb is innovate, but in past participle? Innovated. Excellent, innovated, perfect. Uh -huh. Very good. All right. Now, number four, the new steel toe boots. Mm -hmm. A space of gen uh, genuine leather. Mm -hmm. Have been make it uh, made. Have been made, have been made. Perfect. Um, what is the meaning of, in this case, uh, a steel toe boots? Yes. As is the last, a steel toe boots. And genuine leather, cuero auténtico. Cuero auténtico. Yeah, okay, very good, have been made. Yes, excellent. Number five, okay, number five. So this is a question. Has, has because it's the new safety, right, officer. Has the new uh, safety officer Been has the new safety officer been created? Created? Mm, no, because it's a person. The safety officer. Trained. Yes, entrenado. Mm -hmm. And the last one. Have we have we uh -huh. have we been uh -huh, 
created? The new helmets? Mm. Not exactly. Mm -hmm. Use have we been used the new helmets? Mm -hmm. Okay, we can are uh, used. Okay, but we, we can also use uh, given. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have we been given the new helmets? Se nos han sido dado, right? Los nuevos helmets. Or mm -hmm. hemos sido. The thing is that the been is sido, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and with used, I mean, the idea is almost like, um, I would say, in okay. the context, right? But, okay. We can say, have we been given the new helmets? All right, guys, this is the passive voice with those type of um, examples, right? Now we also have this paragraph and it says, read the following paragraph and underline the passive voice sentences. Well, let's see. Give me one of the passive voice sentences that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Thank you, Abigail. Many tools have been left disorganized, till disorganized. Very good. Give me another one. Has not been informed about. Informed about. Mm -hmm. This one is another one, right? If he has been interested, excellent, yes. Hopefully the new employees have been taught to follow the rules by the book. Very good. Those are the four sentences that we have here in passive voice, present perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have questions? Do you have doubts? Something that is not clear about passive voice present perfect? No, only we need to practice. Yes, it's just practice. This is just practice, guys. Okay, very good. Then what we're going to do is that we're going to practice, okay? So teamwork. We have 10 sentences, and with your team, I need you to change all of those sentences, uh, positive sentences, negative sentences, and questions to passive voice using present perfect only. Present perfect only. Yes? I'll give you a couple of uh, minutes so you can work on this, okay, with your team. And then we're going to come again because we still have different things to cover, okay? So, open the class if you don't have it. Um, but you know what? First, I'm going to take the attendance, okay? So here we go. Um, Aleida Esmeralda Amaya. Uh, let me see. Aleida? No. Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Present. Thank you. Carlos Omar Linares. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Daisy Elizabeth. No. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Eduardo Franco Núñez. No. 
Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Thank you. Jonathan José González Domínguez. Jonathan José González. No. Okay. Jorge Antonio Sánchez Quiñones. Well. José Bernardo López. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Antonio Elías Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan José Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Yes, thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Yes. Present. Thank you. Luis Miguel Corbera Enríquez. Marian Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Marian. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Libet Andrade García. Thank you. Um, Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Raúl Antonio Jordán Miranda. Present. Thank you. Roberto Esaú Celaya Argumedo. Roberto Esaú. Sandra Abigail Bonilla Cano. Present. Thank you, Tatiana Yvonne Torres de Beltrán. Present, Miss. Thank you. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Wendy. Um, okay. And Wilbur Jonathan Bautista Aguilar. Okay. Let's go, guys, to different breakout rooms and work on that. I am driving. Okay, Vladimir, don't worry. Okay, if you don't, um, if you're not able, so you can stay here. Thank you. Yes. Um, let me see. I'll move button. It's always. Okay. Comenzamos. Gary has been paid the bill. Ah, no. Yes. No, the bill. Yes. The bill. No, the, the, bill the bill has, has been, been, has been paid, paid by, by her. her. I'm off by Gary. The hamburger. The hamburger has been. Mm -hmm. Has been eaten, eaten by eaten me. By me. By miles. Miles. Has been the bill has been paid. 
by Kerry, creo que sería la primera. The Bill. The Bill. The Bill has been paid. The Bill has been paid by, by, by her or by Kerry. Next, I have eaten a hamburger. A hamburger have has been eaten by me. A hamburger. Hamburger. Has been. Pero sin la del teacher. In this case, we need to make a sentence, or we make, uh, uh, or we need to make a a question. Oh, yes. No, as you can see, number one, two, three, four. Are Only the nine and ten are the. Are Question. questions correct in this case has been carried paid the bill is correct or we need to change the verb oh okay so in that case the whole uh question is incorrect because you need to make a sentence so in this case it should be if we have carry has paid the bill we need to add the bill ah she's best okay uh -huh. The bill has been, been paid. paid. Oh no, paid P A I D. By carry. By carry. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. In, in this case, pay because it's the same verb in the in in the passive in the um past participle. Past participle. Part Correct. Part okay. As participle. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. The hamburger. Okay. okay. The hamburger has been ate. Parcel. Sí, parcela. Pero una parcela no se puede enviar. Ajá, ahí dice, no puede ser enviada. Obviamente por tú. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Has not sent by you. The auxiliary. Has been. Has, has not. Uh, has, been, uh, has, has not. Has not been. Been. Uh -huh. Then, by you. Uh -huh. The issue has not been agreed uh -huh. by us. O agree to. Very good. Así tendría que ser agree. Yes. Agreed. Past participle. Yes. Agreed. No, agreed. Sería this issue has not uh -huh. been uh -huh. agreed by us. Ok. ¿Y el tú lo dejaríamos o ten, tendríamos que poner agreed to? Very by, good. Así. By us. Like that. Again. So, it should uh, be okay. the issue or this issue has not been agreed to by us. Uh, okay. 
Es como estar de acuerdo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. de uh, Steve es oh, un mañoto no, verdad bien. o no de thieves yes como de... los los ladrones los... ladrones ajá yes. uh -huh. <laughs> have not been caught by them uh -huh. Mm. Uh -huh, very good. She been found. Mm -mm, I don't know. By him. Mm. Sería this is a question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, it's a question. Uh -huh. He sería. Okay. Uh, so he uh -huh. has been. Uh, been found. Has she been found by her? By let me see. By her, brother. Ah, yes, correct. Has he? Yes, correct. Has he been found by her? Correct. Yeah. Have we uh -huh. been? No, that have been by no. them. Mm, okay, again, go again. We no have we been no touched or no oh, noticed 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 uh -huh. by them. Yes. Very good. Uh -huh. I finished. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So let's see. Uh, let me see. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. So let me see if the other ones already finished. Give me one minute. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The, the, the persona, they. Uh -huh. they sure. Yes. It is in the number five, the book haven't read it by them or hasn't? Oh, since it's the book one. It hasn't. Hasn't. Mm -hmm. Because we are talking about the book, not the, the people. The person. Correct. The person. Okay. And you are missing something. Hasn't been. Ah, exactly. Hasn't yeah. been ready. Red. Read. 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 Yes. Read by them. Red. Yes. The 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 past participle of open. It's okay, yeah, like that. Okay. And cycled. Cycled is not common, but. Oh no! But it's cycled. It's, yeah. Como bicicleteado o. Um, <laughs> Yes, eh, como we have cycled, fa, y es como bicicleteado, yes. Uh -huh. ah, como que han hecho bicicleta, ajá, pero pedaleado es diferente. Mm, you know, pero, it's like, like saying como recorrido, pero en bicicleta. Ah, ok. Ajá. Recorrido en bicicleta, ah, ahí sí tiene sentido. Yeah. Ok. Yeah. Ok. The number six, have you not sent the parcel? Mm -hmm. The parcel? parcel? Hasn't been. Has, the parcel? Haven't or hasn't? Haven't. Haven't. Ha, haven't We're haven't. talking about the parcel, not mm -hmm. the parcel. Hasn't been. Sent. Hasn't been sent or sent. 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 Finish conti. Ah, yes. Where are you? Where are you? By you. Uh -huh. Okay. 
number seven. We have not this, agreed to this issue. Mm -hmm. This yes. issue? Issue. In this case, issue is like a bird or like a noun? It's a object. But ahorita it's a object. It's como este problema. Like a noun. And then, mm -hmm. okay. This uh, is subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Estamos convirtiendo. Mm -hmm. As not has as or has not uh -huh. been, been? Mm -hmm. agreed. agreed to uh, agreed. A. Yes. Agreed by, to? by us. By us. But in this case, we need to add the preposition to. Uh, mm -hmm. To. Uh, agreed to. Uh, no, agreed to by, by us. us. Uh -huh. To. By us. By? Mm, uh -huh. I don't understand why. Because we es el verbo compuesto. Ah, okay. Because yeah. he is agreeing to. Yes. Okay. If in if in the sentence don't have the the complement agreed to is not necessary. Okay. Correct. Okay. okay. Number eight. They have not caught the thieves. Yes. The thieves. A. Mm -hmm. Uh, haven't have been, been. Have been. Caught, caught. teacher I, I don't understand when we need to change the verb well always we need to change the verb to the to the past participle yes always remember that in this case the advantage is that you are talking about the present perfect and the verb is already in past participle so you don't need to change it in this one. Okay, only in this one because we have the verb in this time. Yeah, uh -huh. just time in present uh, uh, past participle, sorry. Uh -huh. So you don't need to change it. But you always need to change the verb in past participle when talking about possible. Been. Been. Uh -huh. By them or okay. by they? Oh no, by them. By them. Them. Yes. Has she pointed him? Pointed is the same case that cycle. Right? Correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Ha sido como no telefoneado, ha sido llamado o ha sido yes. llamado por teléfono. Ajá. Uh -huh. Correct. Okay, in this case, we need to use as because it's a, a, a question. In this case, correct. Wait, okay. Um, has she? Uh, he? Mm -hmm. Is as he 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 as Have they not been been by them 
Oh, esto bien. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's go back to the main room. Okay, let's go back. Yeah. Okay, so guys, um, what questions do you have? What questions do you have related to the topic? Is it clear about passive voice in the present perfect? Or do you have any type of doubt right now when it comes to the structure? I think that uh, in my case, I need to Support more with the uh, uh, verbs, okay. Because I dab in the in, in different verbs when he is in in the correct time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But in this case, we need to practice, right? That's what we are going to do: practice and practice. So yes, it's okay. So anybody else that may have any type of question about a structure about this topic? Um, okay, let me ask then, which is the past, uh, the passive voice for Carrie has paid the bill, Emerson? Okay, uh -huh. The bill has been paid by Carrie. Excellent. The bill has been paid by Carrie. What about for number two, Emerson? I have eaten a hamburger. A hamburger has been eaten by me. Perfect. Number three, Emerson, we have cycled five miles. Five miles has been cycled by us. Oh, five, five miles has or have? Has. Have. Uh, oh, but about five miles is plural. Five miles. Have. It, this is have. Has been cycled by us. By, by us. I mean, um, it should be have because five miles, plural. Mm -hmm. So remember that we use have for plural and has for singular. But five miles, mm -hmm. plural. It's have. It's have. Okay. Uh, okay, number four, Emerson, I have opened the present. The present has been opened by me. Okay, this pronunciation opened. Opened. Excellent. Uh, next one, Emerson, they have not read the book. The book has not been read by them. Excellent. Next one, Emerson. You have not sent the parcel. The parcel has oh, not sure. been sent by you. Perfect. Next one. We have not agreed to this issue, Emerson. This issue have not been agreed by us. Okay. So this issue have not or has not. This, it's a singular. Yes, it's, it's a singular. We has has not. Yes. Okay. So this issue has not been agreed to by us. To by us. Uh -huh. To by yeah. us. Yes. Next one, Emerson. They have not caught the thieves. The thieves have not been caught by them. Perfect. Now questions, Emerson. Has she found him? Has he been found by her? Okay, just pronunciation, found. Found. Yes. 
And the last one, Emerson, have they noticed us? Has, have we been noticed by them? Yes, pronunciation, noticed. Noticed. Very good. Noticed. Have we been noticed by them? We have been noticed by them. By them. By them, by them, yes. Okay, very good. So you see, very good, excellent, okay? Just, we need to work on pronunciation, probably with the ED ending sounds as well, but okay, so right now, very good, okay? All yes. right, guys, very good. Thank you, Emerson. Now, we're going to uh, look at an, an example of email using passive voice. So you can probably just have the idea, yes, on how this email look like. So we have right here uh, two and the subject, right? So we have intermediate English too. So we are sending this to us, yeah? So the subject is going to be update on project status, yes? So I need volunteers to read. I need three volunteers. Who wants to read? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, so Emerson, can you please? Yeah, help us reading the first paragraph, then Maurice, the second paragraph, and then this part, please, Abigail. The last part, all of this, Abigail. Okay. Dear team, I wanted to inform you that the project timeline has been ex extended by one, one week. This decision has made by upper management after the careful consideration of various factors. The additional time will allow for more thought of Excellent. testing and quality research to ensure a successful product to launch. Okay, very good. Thank you. The, the project plan will be revising at Accordingly, and today, version will be shared with each team member. Mm -hmm. Any change in the responsible or delivery, deliverable, deliverable, today, deliverable, yes, today will be communicated individually. Individually. Abigail? Hello? No? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Oh, maybe Abigail is not there. Okay. Tony, help us read in the last part. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Your input and feedback are valuable, 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 valuable for the project's success. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding and continued dedication to this project. Best regards, Tony Elias. Excellent. Okay, very good. All right, guys. So just pronunciation. Okay, first of all, assurance and quality assurance. Revised, revised, yeah, updated, ED, updated, deliverable, deliverable, individually, and valuable. Yeah. So in this case, as you can see, we have uh, this short email and we are using passive voice. The project deadline has been extended by one week. The decision or this decision was made by upper management. Upper management. The project plan will be revised accordingly and updated versions will be shared as you can see we have also passive voice for future will be shared with each team member any changes in responsibilities or deliverable due dates will be communicated individually so all of this is passive voice 
in different tenses, of course, right? So this is how an email may look like. Okay, of course it depends on the on the on the message, right? But this is just an example. Okay. Very good. So now, do you have questions, doubts? No? Okay, very good. Let's move, guys. And we're going to move to, um, you know, we're going to take the listening quiz right now. Yeah, and then we're going to move to speaking. Yes? So let's take the listening quiz right now. Let me get the link for you. Okay. So listening quiz 20. That is the link. And there you go. The, the passcode is going to be listening. Yeah, passcode is listen. Oh my gosh, our results were fast. <laughs> okay, so now once again, right? Okay, let me see. Mm. Okay, um, let me know once you are ready. Ready, Miss. Okay. I'm ready. Excellent. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to play this recording uh, three times, okay? Three times. Um, it is really interesting, okay? So let's pay attention. Let me see. Yes, okay, here we go. Okay. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about dogs or cats. And when mm -hmm. we think about cute little dogs or cats or big dogs and cats, mm -hmm. Often people are thinking about, well, what are the pros and cons of each one? And when you think about dogs and cats specifically, what are the benefits of having a dog and a cat? And which would you choose if you had to make that choice? Now, I'm going to start by saying I, I couldn't make that choice. Okay. I, I need both of them in my life. I have a dog and a cat, and they're great. I can definitely see why one would pick one over the other, though. Like cats are great, but I can see why you wouldn't like one. Like people don't want to have to clean out a litter box. Sometimes cats are really aloof. Like um, my first cat that I had would do this things where sometimes he would come and sit on my lap, but didn't want me to touch him. So he would bite me and I wouldn't know which way it would go until I tried to pet him. <laughs> so um, a little temperamental. <laughs> yes. Good cat. Loved the heck out of him. But um, he was, it's hard with cats sometimes because they have attitudes. Then you get dogs on the other hand, which, you know, your stereotypical dog is pretty needy, right? They want your attention. They want this and that. Obviously, you're going to have varieties of dogs. Like you're going right. to have ones that are more independent and ones that like to complain a lot like huskies. Um, but, you know, they're just different, right? Like I think in the middle of the night when my dog wakes me up, it's like, oh, if only he knew how to use the litter box, I don't want to get out of bed. Because <laughs> you have to take him outside. Exactly. But on the other hand, he does make me exercise because I have to go for a walk. Okay. So, so you cotton. said choice mm -hmm. between a dog and cat? Can't make one. Can't mm -hmm. make one. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for sharing those ideas on cats and dogs. Okay. Here we go again. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about dogs or cats. And when mm -hmm. we think mm -hmm. about cute little dogs or cats or big dogs and cats, mm -hmm. often people are thinking about, well, what are the pros and cons of each one? And when you think about dogs and cats specifically, what are the benefits of having a dog and a cat? And which would you choose if you had to make that choice? Now, I'm going to start by saying I, I couldn't make that choice. Okay. I, I need both of them in my life. I have a dog and a cat, and they're great. I can definitely see why one would pick one over the other, though. Like, cats are great, but I can see why you wouldn't like one. Like, people don't want to have to clean out a litter box. Sometimes cats are really aloof. Like, 
Um, my first cat that I had would do these things where sometimes he would come and sit on my lap, but didn't want me to touch him. So he would bite me and I wouldn't know which way it would go until I tried to pet him. <laughs> um, so a little temperamental. <laughs> yes. Good cat. Loved the heck out of him. But um, he was, it's hard with cats sometimes because they have attitudes. Then you get dogs on the other hand, which, you know, your stereotypical dog is pretty needy, right? They want your attention. They want this and that. Obviously, you're going to have varieties of dogs. Like you're going right. to have ones that are more independent and ones that like to complain a lot like huskies. Um, but, you know, they're just different, right? Like I think in the middle of the night when my dog wakes me up, it's like, oh, if only he knew how to use the litter box. I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> Because you have to take him outside. Exactly. But on the other hand, he does make me exercise because I have to go for a walk. So, so you cotton. said choice mm -hmm. between a dog and cat? Can't make one. Can't mm -hmm. make one. All right. Well, thanks for sharing those ideas on cats and dogs. Okay. This is the last time. Okay. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about dogs or cats. And when we think about cute little dogs or cats or big dogs and cats, mm -hmm. often people are thinking about, well, what are the pros and cons of each one? And when you think about dogs and cats specifically, what are the benefits of having a dog and a cat? And which would you choose if you had to make that choice? Now, I'm gonna start by saying I, I couldn't make that choice. Okay. I, I need both of them in my life. I have a dog and a cat, and they're great. I can definitely see why one would pick one over the other, though. Like, cats are great, but I can see why you wouldn't like one. Like, people don't want to have to clean out a litter box. Sometimes cats are really aloof. Like, um, my first cat that I had would do these things where sometimes he would come and sit on my lap, but didn't want me to touch him. So he would bite me, and I wouldn't know which way it would go until I tried to pet him. <laughs> so um, a little temperamental <laughs> yes good cat loved the heck out of him but um he was it's hard with cats sometimes because they have attitudes then you get dogs on the other hand which you know your stereotypical dog is pretty needy right they want your attention they want this and that obviously you're going to have varieties of dogs like you're going right. to have ones that are more independent and ones that like to complain a lot like huskies um, but you know, they're just different, right? Like I think in the middle of the night when my dog wakes me up, it's like, oh, if only he knew how to use the litter box, I don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> Cause you have to take him outside. Exactly. But on the other hand, he does make me exercise cause I have to go for a walk. Okay. So, so you cotton. said choice mm -hmm. between a dog and cat. Can't make one. Can't mm -hmm. make one. All right. Well, thanks for sharing those ideas on cats and dogs. Okay. So let me see your scores. Okay. Very good. I can see that some of you got 100. Okay. Okay. Was it difficult? Uh, Mm -hmm. Was it difficult or so so? So so. <laughs> so so, all right. Mm, okay. All right, guys. So let's move and let's work right now on the speaking time. Okay. We're going to practice for 10 uh, to 15 minutes. Okay. We have a speaking time. So, guys, um, so we have a speaking time and we're going to talk about, first of all, poverty. Okay. So, how do you define poverty? Okay, for people in our country. Examples, not having a car, not having a house, not having water to drink, etc. Okay, we're going to talk about poverty. Then, in your opinion, is it possible to be happy in spite of being poor? In spite of, what is the meaning? A pesar de, in spite of being poor. What do you think? Okay. Then we are going to move to those, okay? What's the best age to? What's the best age to start learning a foreign language? What do you think? What's the best age to get married? 
what's the best age to have children and what's the best age to make a career change if you want to change your career, right? And then I want you to move to those. What is your favorite travel destination and why? Yeah. How does traveling to different countries or experiencing different cultures, cultures, broaden our perspective? What is broaden? What is the meaning of broaden, guys? Hacer so, referencia a ser más amplio. Excellent. Okay. To extend, right? Very good. Broaden es como ampliar, as uh, Tony said. Okay. You know, guys, this word is very useful whenever you are using, like, for example, um, lo que yo necesito hacer es ampliar mi vocabulario. Yes. Instead of using improve, en lugar de decir como mejorar, improve, necesitamos utilizar broaden. So you can say, I need you to broaden my vocabulary. Okay, or we can use the phrasal verb. That is, I need to broaden up my vocabulary. Yeah, ampliar. En lugar de decir extend, improve. Yeah. It's another word for you to use. Then what aspects of our own culture do you value the most and why, guys? Okay, so let's practice for 10 minutes and then we are going to come back again, all right? Let's move. Everyone going to tell about one topic. Um, for example, uh, me, uh, I'm going to talk about the different poverty for people in our country, and then um, I need to to carve for people in our country. The capacity of the brain of bite a house, for example. Yeah, I think that when you uh, don't have the capacity to cover the basic needs, when people have a car, not, necess not necessarily have a money. Because it's a tool or oh, work the tool, herramienta de trabajo. Maybe I think that poverty is more more uh, um more white concept. Why? Because uh, if you think about the department that this is the more poverty in El Salvador, Morazan, Cabañas, and Chalatenango. You look that these people only have a, a little champa, yeah, um, and they don't have a, a salary. They are journalists, mm -hmm. journalists in the in the in the fields, and they um, live between the collaborations of all ONG 
and and they don't have uh, uh, water, they don't have light or electricity, they don't have, uh, um, um, I, I don't know, uh, food for every day. Uh, and you could see too, this type of people in uh, San Salvador, in the, uh, how do you say, Riveras del Rio? Um, and like, uh, sorry, uh, Riveras Urban. del Rio, Rio. Uh. river sides of the rivers, like Aceluate, uh. and in communities that is so so poor, maybe this is a. a Sorry. I think better when I when when I shake. Uh, I think it's be the best dishes when you are a kid. Uh, because it's easier to learn uh, a lot of things. I think uh, since you are little because learning is very absurd. Mm, you know, guys, it mm, it's better. It's like very. Uh, I would say contradictory, right? Because yeah, the best age to start learning a foreign language or something new is when we are kids, right? But the thing is that sometimes when you are uh, a kid, right? So you don't actually really pay attention because you don't even care about the knowledge that you are getting. Right. So I think that it depends. It depends because um, I think that it depends on the age and the purpose. Uh, you I, I think um, if you're a kid, depends if you have someone to guide you. Mm -hmm. Because yes. if you are alone, uh, a kid doesn't study from himself. Yes, and they don't really take serious, I mean, the learning process. So I think that the best age, in my opinion, right, to start learning a foreign language or something new, it will be around uh, around 16. Yes, that's what I think, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what the best age? To get married, never. Mm -hmm. What's the best age to get married? Mm -hmm. What do you never. think? <laughs> I, I think making <laughs> <laughs> just uh, how do you say, teacher? Um, mm -hmm. Sumando. Sum sumano? Yes. Sumano? Like Pedir su mano? Uh, no, uh, like a uh, suma. Ah. Mando. Suman. Yes. Adding uh, up. Adding up, uh huh. Okay. Adding up uh, numbers. Um, making making counts, I think, or like 30 or. Mm -hmm. maybe because you finished your study and it, it is supposed that you have a, a job and okay. you are established <laughs> i think <laughs> okay right so that is okay and the other ones 
what's the best age to get married? Ooh. I think I think feel prepared to get married and prepare the government by the wife. <laughs> okay, but Pablo, in this case, what age do you consider? Eighty. Mm -hmm. Um, when I, I have more mm -hmm. um, ser maduro, I guess. Ah, uh, when I'm <laughs> more mature. Mm, but 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 what age? Okay, but what age is that one, Pablo? What age? Yeah. I marry when I have um, mm -hmm. twenty five years. Oh, when I was. In in ah, it was it it was it was uh, and, and twenty five. Okay. I don't prepare. I was not prepared. Right. I was not prepared. Okay. 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 So now that you had that experience, Pablo, that you got married when you were 25, now what do you think is the best age to get married? Oh, mm, never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Pablo. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, okay. Carla, what about you? What do you think? I think never, no. <laughs> um, if the person won, maybe 28 mm -hmm. or okay. to 30, 30. I maybe, but, okay. but I think it's is uh, prefer to have a job, a house. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. So, but you see Carla from 28 to 35, okay? And you, Emerson? I, I think it's better day she's when you finish uh, college. The college. When you have a job, Stability. Stability. Job stability. Yes. It, you have a I think it's the best, best age. The best age. But what, what age is that one, number? So I mean, 30, 31, um, 35. I think it's around, yeah. 20, 30, 26, around. 26, okay. You see? Okay, very good. Well, okay. Uh, it depends, right? I think that it depends. So, okay, continue, guys. Continue, continue. What's the best age to have children? Hmm. It's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> In the case of uh, women, maybe... Mm -hmm. 25 to 30, 30, 35, 35. because uh -huh. in next years, it's more difficult for the mm -hmm. woman, yes. for women. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, you know, for women, uh, yeah, from probably 30 to 35, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. but for men, Ooh. But for women, it's because of that, right? But for men? Today, I am not, I am not ready. Imagine. I told my, my daughter are teenagers. Okay. okay. And you're still not ready. You feel that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. I, I think... Uh, uh, between 30 and 35 because yeah. um, 
for us uh, men uh, are more mature and yes. responsible. I think the same. Yes. Okay. All right. Could be, right? I think that it depends because for men, probably, as uh, Jose said, I think that for men, probably 30, 35, 36, 38, right? Because you are more major. And for women, probably because of, of actually uh, risks, right? It will be that age as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, continue, guys. What is your favorite travel destination and why? Um, talking about the first one, what age? <clears throat> Four years old, five years old, ten years old, fifteen years old. I don't know. I I'm not married. <laughs> no, no, no. To learn a foreign language. Uh, when mm. when a people is young, for me, learn learn fast. Mm, is the best age? Maybe could uh, could be another age. Uh, for example, uh, me, I have thirty six, uh, thirty five years old. I. I hope the uh, learning very well English. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and in your opinion, Maris, thanks. what's the best age to start learning a foreign language? Uh, for me, when the he's younger. When I very, was younger, okay. he's very. We are younger. <laughs> Yes, yeah. we are young. But, we are young. Yeah. <laughs> but I I don't I don't younger. I am I, not <laughs> young. I am not. I am not young. I am I, I am not young. Uh, mm. I am learning English, but very como difficult. Cuesta, cuesta, difficult, very difficult. difficult for me. Okay, it is kind of difficult. But it, 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 it's not impossible. Yes, of yeah. course, it's not impossible. Yes. But uh, I have a, a thing one zero. Mm -hmm. mm. Very difficult. It is difficult, but, okay. But, but I hear. I think that the best um, age to learn mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. between the, the five, six years to the 10, ten years. is the most important time to grow and when the child or the kids in this case Mm -hmm. uh, have a, a tool language to learn is more easy, more, more it's fast. Easier, easier, it's easier, faster, easier, easier and faster. Correct. Um, is the is the perfect time to to learn, okay. but um, the, the, talking about the best time, but if you think we are uh, um, a seniors and. And we are learning too. And uh, I think that is uh, uh, a question of purpose. If you propose that you have a, a, um, and the, the cell decide to learn, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't matter the, the age. Yes, that is correct. Yes, that is true. Um, to get married, Maurice is not married, mm -hmm. but you, Carlos, the best age, or, or why do you never? <laughs> 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 My uh, god, 
independent independent situation depends on the situation yeah depend of the girls <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 in other way do you don't have the the answer to this question <laughs> okay guys for me mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. The best age is between 25 and 30 years, no mm -hmm. more. Mm, maybe if you get married when you have 20 or 24, 22, 23, you are so immature to take this decision. Mm -hmm. But when you have 25, you, you know you, and you know yourself, and mm -hmm. you know what do you do to do and what do you like and what do you um, have in your potential if you find a, a, a perfect or, or the adequate woman mm -hmm. uh, you can choose a big deal like in my case um, um, I I um, get married in 25 years old and uh, it's uh, the best decision of my life and i have uh, 28 years of well no married how do you say no, no. Mm -hmm. I, i'm getting married in 2099 and at this time i had 23 years and in november and december i have 24 i, I gone to um get 24 years but um I have four years more of you know, the relationship actually, of the relationship mm -hmm. and it's, it's enough time to know my girlfriend now my wife and to 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 get the best decision and yeah. we have we, we had the time to make a, a, a saving account to get married perfect I think that that, that was uh wise right I mean you planned everything uh -huh. For me, it's depend mm -hmm. because uh, uh, for me, when a uh, career has been grown and have a job, then marry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your your uh, your uh, um, priorities are different. Yeah? You you need to complete your career. You need to complete yeah. other things before the, the the marriage. Of if you think that this is not necessary for you. Mm -hmm. Very good. And to have children, it's not necessary to get married to have children. Yeah. All right. Not necessary. No. What do you think, Carlos and Mauricio? Mm -hmm. I think uh, when is when is people young, young, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, they have the the fortaleza, the strength. The strength to to care to care mm, to take care the, to take the, care to take care the the children. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, in what age? Around um, what 20, age? between uh, twenty five and thirty years old. And thirty years, okay, mm, okay. Between twenty five and thirty years old, and you, Maris, what do you yeah. think? And for uh, I. It's better to have children when when you are young. The chair and the thing and twenty five very old. Okay. At the same way, I agree with with them. Twenty five to thirty. Between thirty, I'm no more longer than. 35, maybe in 40 years is um, is um, uh -huh. has a real time to the to the girls to, to the women. Yes, yes. Uh, but it's not impossible. It, um, the the Latin American culture is more focused in 
in to be fathers and mothers um, when he was young. But in the European culture, is more or less the, is more important the professional career, uh, the preparation, and the, um, the successful in, in in their jobs, that the that the um, productivity of the woman and the and the men uh, to have uh, children. But I think that this is the best time because you need the strength to to play with them to to enjoy the the um, the the small the, the the all the time with with the the child and you when you have forty or forty five years and you have a ch uh, the first child uh, think about if you consider it to to pull in the in the floor and play with them and play basketball or play football when he was ten and you have 55 years it's, it's so difficult i think that is not impossible but the best time to be father is between 25 and 30 years the responsibility because uh, the latin american too uh, was um pregnant in between 15 years and, and yes 15 years and, and 15 years is is so hard and difficult for the girls um, because he she played with dolls and then played with with boys it's, it's so difficult the, the this change but this is my opinion okay yes it is valid right mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, let's go to the main room because it's almost time and we need to take the, the quiz, the reading quiz, okay? Let's okay. go back, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, all right. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so we are going to take the reading quiz. Okay, the reading quiz before we finish with our class. There you go, the link, and I'm going to share my screen because I'm going to share the, the short paragraph. Yeah. So let me see. Okay, open the quiz and the, um, the code is reading, reading, capital letters. Okay, so guys, we are going to take the reading quiz. So there you go, the link, okay, for the ones that just joined. Um, their passcode is going to be reading, capital letters, reading. Okay, reading. Okay, guys, once you are uh, done, right, you can go ahead and start. This is the paragraph. It's so easy. We will have um, five minutes.
Hasta un mes. Ok, thank you guys. Let me see. Thank you, Tatiana. Don. Ok, thank you. Okay, guys, um, are you all done? I think that maybe yes. Um, okay, guys, before we go, actually it's already at 10. So before we go, just a reminder, don't forget to work on the platform. Okay, don't forget about the platform, please. Uh, Pablo, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, Pablo, please please stay with me, okay? Then the other ones, guys, okay. if you don't have any question related to the topic that we covered today, I'll see you back on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend and a good night, all right? So take care, guys. See you on Monday, okay? Thank you. Good night. Good Everybody. night. Good night, miss. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Good night. Take care. Night, teacher. See you on Monday. See you on Monday, Jose. Good night. Okay, so Pablo, this short uh, feedback, the one that we are going to have is just for us to, to know how do you feel with uh, this new module, right? I would like to know how do you feel, if you feel good with our classes, with the dynamic of the class, if you have any type of observation, if you have any type of comment, or if you need um, something related to a topic that you didn't understand, Right, so I would like to listen to your opinion about this new module. Um, uh, in this new module, uh, I have doubts okay. about the, the use of clothes or bird. Okay. Can you explain? All right, uh, give me one second, Pablo, okay? Give me okay. a second, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Okay, so you were telling me that you have questions about the um, the reduction of relative clauses. Yes. Ah, okay. So, what questions do you have? Um, when they use uh, of a uh, play, play. Okay. So let me see. Um, let me see if I can get the class so I can show you, okay? Okay, okay so let me see if it's this one. No, okay. And did you complete the platform or no jet? Um, on on to uh, meter. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Um, Pablo, is this the topic that you are talking about? Yes. This one. Okay. So, bye. I'm going to explain. Okay, le voy a explicar. Es el tema que que le causa dudas. Okay. Yes. 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 Bye. All right. So, um, well, Pablo. 
In English, okay, we have, sorry, we have this topic that is called reducing adverbial time clauses. Yes? Ahora, okay. eh, ¿qué es el reducir este tipo de oraciones? Bien. Mm -hmm. eh, se, se dice que estas oraciones eh, le, le llamamos oraciones de adverbio. ¿Por qué? Ok, Lucas dice, fíjese en estas oraciones, Pablo. En todas estas oraciones nosotros tenemos adverbios. ¿Y cuáles son los adverbios de tiempo? After, before, while, when, and although. ¿Sí? Yes. Estos son adverbios que nosotros utilizamos para expresar diferentes ideas. Ahora. Para nosotros reducir una oración que lleva un adverbio, tenemos que seguir ciertas reglas. ¿Cuáles son estas reglas? La primera, check if we can reduce it by making sure you have the same subjects in both sentences. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que nos aseguremos, Pablo, de que en las uh -huh. dos oraciones tengamos el mismo sujeto. Y a lo que nos referimos es, fíjese bien, esta es la primera oración y después de la coma está la segunda oración. Aquí hay dos oraciones. Sí, sí. Entonces, Pablo, yo le pregunto, ¿estas dos oraciones tienen el mismo sujeto? No. Eh, ¿Por qué no. no? Fíjese bien, aquí tenemos day. Ajá. Y aquí tenemos The Performers. Ah, oh, okay, ok. ¿Tenemos el mismo sujeto o no? Sí. Sí, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí ya podemos ver que sí podemos reducir esa oración. Entonces, uh -huh. como ya vimos y vimos que sí se puede reducir, nos vamos al siguiente paso que dice Eliminate the subject in the adverb clause. Vamos a eliminar el sujeto en la oración que contiene el adverbio. Ahora le pregunto, Pablo, ¿cuál de las dos oraciones contiene el adverbio? ¿La primera o la segunda? La primera. Muy bien. Entonces, como la regla dice que vamos a eliminar el sujeto que contiene esa oración, vamos a eliminar day. day. Ahí ya vamos con el siguiente paso. Cuando ya eliminamos day, lo que tenemos que hacer es poner el verbo en ing. Entonces, uh -huh. esta oración ya va a quedar de la siguiente manera. After singing two songs, coma, porque tenemos que respetar también la coma que está ahí. Uh -huh. The performers. Dira dance. Entonces aquí ya está esta oración reducida. Y ahora le muestro cómo queda. Uy, eh, ¿dónde está aquí? Ya le muestro cómo queda. Vaya, mire. Entonces uh -huh. la oración quedó así porque ya la reducimos. Entonces ahora yo le pregunto. ¿Cómo quedaría la número dos? Primero, mm. identificar, ¿verdad? Ajá. Yes. yes. The same subject. Subject, ok. Before answering. Excellent. Entonces, sí, ¿verdad? Before answering. 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 Before answering the phone. He grabbed a pencil and notepad. Yes? Miren. Yes. Muy bien. Ahora, vamos a la siguiente. Y aquí puede entrar las dudas que tal vez podríamos tener. La tercera, si usted se fija, llevamos un verbo to be. Dice, while I was away in college... I stay with my roommate's family during one spring break. La regla dice que si yo llevo 
vaya, primero, ¿se puede reducir esta, la número 3, sí o no? Sí, porque es el mismo sujeto. El mismo sujeto, vaya. Entonces ahí ya descartamos que sí podemos proseguir. Entonces, la regla dice que si yo llevo el verbo to be en la oración, dice que lo que voy a hacer es, voy a eliminar el sujeto de la oración que lleva el adverbio y el verbo to be. Entonces voy a eliminar esto y esto. Uh -huh. Pero away no es un verbo. Entonces lo único que vamos a hacer es poner lo que está ahí. No tenemos que poner más nada. Vamos a poner while away in college, coma, I stayed with my roommates family uy, family during one spring break ¿Sí? Entonces, lo que tenemos que hacer es quitar el sujeto y el verbo to be pero tenemos que saber que away no es un verbo. Entonces no le podemos poner ing. Ajá. No se puede decir away. Sí. Es un noun. Entonces lo dejamos así. No hay más nada que agregar ni nada más que hacer. Solo lo dejamos así. Ahora, fíjese en la número cuatro. En la número cuatro, aquí tenemos el sujeto, que es el mismo. Y tenemos uh -huh. verbo to be. Verbo Entonces, to be, sí. aquí lo eliminamos también y es más fácil porque aquí sí tenemos un ING. Entonces, sí. solo ponemos. When working at home, Carla takes her youngest child to school in the morning. Ahora, ¿cómo sería la 5? Sería auto. Muy bien, all the hard, porque vamos a eliminar esas dos. Uh -huh. Y solo dejamos hard. Uh -huh. Y esa sí no se le coloca ING, ¿verdad? No, no se le, colo no, no uh -huh. se le coloca. Uh -huh. bueno, la otra duda que yo tengo, porque eh, la vez que di esta clase, ¿Sí? eh, incluso más adelante dio unos ejercicios. Sí. Y cuando estuvimos en Break a Room, este, nos explicó que también podíamos cambiar de posición las... Ah, sí. La, ajá. Eh, ahí sí me entró más duda, porque ¿en qué momento yo decido hacer eso? Mm, vale, en ese, en ese caso, mm, vale, permítame, voy a buscar la clase, creo que fue clase 7, creo ya yo, déjeme ver. Quiero ver si es esta. No, no es la 7. Creo que fue como la 5. Creo que la 5, creo que es. No, no es la 5. Veamos la 6. No, no es ni la 5 ni la 6. Quiero ver 5, 6, 7, 8. Probablemente la... No, la 8 es la que estábamos viendo. Permítame, quiero ver si aquí tenemos los... No, aquí están las transition words. Déjenme la busco. Sí, me recuerdo de esos ejercicios que, que les puse. Sí. Fíjense que eh, no es que uno eh, 
decida, ¿verdad? En el sentir cómo, cuándo va a, a usar una u otra. Déjenme, quiero ver qué es, creo que es. Quiero ver, tendría que ser. No la encuentro, mira. Ahorita que la andamos buscando, no la encuentro. Seis. No, esta ya la vi, no es esta. Probablemente la cuatro. Sí, esa creo que es. Sí, esta. Bueno. Entonces, en esta, Pablo, veamos, le voy a compartir la pantalla. Vale. En esta, en esta clase, fue, fue este, ¿verdad? Eh, creo que fue la número dos. Que en este caso, Pablo, si usted se fija, el adverbio, ¿dónde está el adverbio en la número dos? ¿Dónde está el adverbio de tiempo? Está en, en, en medio, que está en before. Aquí, ¿verdad? Es en medio. Entonces, le pregunto yo, ¿cuál es la oración que lleva el adverbio? ¿Cuál? ¿La primera o la segunda? La segunda, segunda. Muy bien, la segunda. Entonces, aquí lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a seguir la misma regla, pero no es necesario que le cambiemos. No es necesario que le demos vuelta a la oración. La podemos dejar así y quedaría... My sister does exercises to warm up, to warm up before playing, before playing any soccer game. ¿Sí? Mira. Entonces no es necesario que nosotros le demos como vuelta a la oración. Ahora, si usted quiere darle vuelta, ¿verdad? Quedaría así. Before playing any soccer game, my sister, pero aquí le teníamos que poner una coma, y aquí le ponemos, my sister does exercises to warm up. Si quisiéramos darle vuelta. Pero no pero es obligatorio. No es obligatorio, por supuesto que no. Entonces aquí la mejor respuesta, si su oración está así, la número dos es así, yo le pido eh, eh, cambie la oración dos y redúzcala. No va a ser esta la segunda porque ahí usted está modificando la estructura y no se le está pidiendo que modifique, está, se le está pidiendo que la reduzca tal cual está. Entonces sería ah, okay, okay. así. Uh -huh. Entonces estoy eh, cambiando el significado lo que quiero decir. No, pero no cambia el significado. No cambia. No, es el mismo. Uh -huh. Es el mismo, mismo, mismo. Porque si nosotros uh -huh. decimos, vaya, digamos, si nosotros decimos, mmm, permítame, Pablo, quiero ver. Si nosotros decimos, en este caso, ¿cómo? Quiero ver, espérame. Voy a, voy a ponérsela como la teníamos. Uh -huh. Vaya, miren. Entonces aquí, Pablo, vea, vea bien. Dice, mi hermana hace ejercicio para calentar antes eh, eh, de jugar, uh -huh. de, tener, de tener cualquier partido, ¿ok? De fútbol, ¿sí? Entonces, sí. y abajo dice, 
antes de jugar cualquier partido de fútbol, mi hermana hace ejercicios para calentar. No uh -huh. cambia el significado, es el mismo. En la primera... Solo es la manera de explicarlo. Correcto. Uh -huh. Es la única cosa que podría como cambiar. Pero en realidad la idea es la misma. Mi hermana hace ejercicio para calentar antes de jugar fútbol. Antes de jugar fútbol, mi hermana hace ejercicios para calentar. Es el mismo, es el mismo mensaje. Ajá, o sea que no, no a fuerza tengo que poner eh, el adverbio de tiempo inicialmente. No, 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 aquí no, no es necesario, ajá, no es necesario. No puede ser lo que me, me ocasiona un poquito de duda. De confusión, no, pero en ese caso no es necesario. Algunos lo hicieron así, ¿verdad? Como para ver la misma secuencia que habíamos estudiado antes, pero no es que eh, tengamos que hacerlo así mandatoriamente, ¿no? Porque la estructura, si ve el adverbio es en medio, entonces tenemos que respetar uh -huh. esto. Ajá. ¿Alguna sí. otra pregunta? Sí, por el momento quizás eh, eso es lo que le, le, me tenía un poquito así como confundido. Ah, ok. ¿Pero Ajá. con eso ya se le aclaró un poquito? Sí, sí. ¿Sí? Sí, está más claro. Vaya. Ok, Pablo. Bien, bueno, Pablo, eh, ¿en la plataforma ha tenido problemas con la plataforma? Pues, eh, no, realmente no. Eh, he llegado hasta el, el meter, pero eh, no he logrado hacer lo demás porque por cuestión de tiempo, ¿verdad? pero sí, este, más que todo el fin de semana yo me pongo el día. Vaya, ok, mm -hmm. Pablo. Sí, eh, bueno, en ese caso, eh, Pablo, eh, feedback, ¿verdad? De mí para usted. He visto que esta, este módulo está un poquito más participativo y eso es muy bueno, ¿ok? Quiero que continúe participando siempre en las clases porque así es como usted va a aprender participando, hablando. Eh, y eso, pues, eh, se nota, ¿verdad? Cuando usted participa, pues, se nota. Entonces, quiero que participe aún más cuando pidamos voluntarios para que podamos nosotros también evaluar cómo se va progresando en su speaking, en su pronunciación, ¿verdad? Entonces es bien importante que siempre eh, practiquemos y nosotros pues eh, también eh, participemos, ¿verdad? Es bien importante. Así que pues lo felicito porque veo que esta vez está participando más incluso en los breakout rooms y eso es muy bueno. Así que Pablo, eh, no sé si tiene algo más que agregar, algo más que decirme. No, no, le agradezco mucho la, el tiempo que se toma por, para explicarme y para, en realidad, para explicarnos a todos, ¿verdad? Y cuando le pedimos ayuda, pues es inaccesible. Así sí. que lo agradezco mucho. Que ok, un es gusto. Parte fundamental para, para, para aprender, ¿verdad? Sí, Entonces, claro que este, sí. Sí, este, no, no, nada más eso, eso, eso esas eran mis, mis dudas por el momento y este, sí, eh, eh, bueno, le, le, le vamos a ir poniendo más ganas también. Sí, claro ah, que sí, yo creo sí, que sí. eso es, sí, eso es lo, 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 lo ideal, ¿verdad? Que se le vaya poniendo más sí. ganas y más ganas. Sí, sí, exactamente. Bye. Ok, Pablo, entonces un gusto, cualquier duda, pregunta, siempre hágamelo saber. Ok, y sí, yo con gusto sí. pues lo voy a apoyar. Así que Pablo, vamos sí. a dejar el feedback hasta este momento y cualquier cosa usted siempre me puede contactar, ok? Ok, gracias, muy amable. Bueno, ok, so good night. Okay, good night. Good night, see you. Ok, bye bye. <risa>